right, folks. I am back. And I have to say, what could even be said at this point? I've not really known what was going on with the Ron DeSantis campaign since he announced it, because that was a surprise to me. Thinking of Ron DeSantis as a rational actor, as he appeared to be, based on his actions um, <clears throat> from 2020 to 2022... I surmise that, well, DeSantis has obviously built up a lot of popularity. He's going to want to run for president at some point, and he would want to win. So, you know, logically, he will wait until 2028, because we all know that Trump is going to run again in 24. And anyone who runs against Trump in 24 is going to get absolutely trounced. No Republican was going to have a chance at beating Trump in 2024, and so all you do is is um, risk alienating yourself uh, from uh, the base of the party. And after all, DeSantis had built his um, his success largely on built uh, on you know advertising himself as an acolyte of Trump, as being a Trump super fan very famous ad of Ron DeSantis's from 2018 when he was first running for governor featured him teaching his son uh, to, quote, build the wall, you know, out of blocks. And then he was reading his son a bedtime story about making America great again. But then he decided, you know what, I, I know, I, I can take on the big man. You know, it could be, after all, I was more right uh, about, uh, you know, the vaccines and the lockdowns than Trump was. Um, even though, you know, they both sort of played both sides a little bit. Trump, very staunchly pro-vaccine. DeSantis was a bit more skeptical and eventually became very skeptical. Um, same thing with the lockdown stuff. You know, at first, uh, you know, he, he went along with it a little bit, but for not a very long time. You know, all of these things are on a relative basis when you consider the um, the the national conversation at, at the time. Uh, DeSantis was typically, actually, I can't think of any time in which he was not um, more skeptical of these things uh, than than Trump was at any given time. And so, perhaps after all that and lots of encouragement, DeSantis, uh, you know, no doubtedly being pumped up by the. Uh, the consultant class, who would have a lot to gain from him running for president, he was convinced that he could take on the big man himself. And while you know these uh, these poetic copes that we hear cycle after cycle about how the polls leading up to Iowa are completely wrong. And how everyone's going to be surprised an ex-candidate is going to actually win when, it, when you know, all the polls say that they are uh, 30 points behind. Well, what we learned last night, yet again, is that, sure, are polls often wrong? Are they usually wrong? Yes. Are the polls uh, fundamentally broken? Yes. Uh, but even the polls are not so broken uh, that... When the polls show Trump over 50 percent and they show DeSantis and Haley, you know, in the teens, uh, the folks battling it out for second and third place are not going to come anywhere near uh, beating Trump. You're not going to overcome a 30 or 40 point deficit in the polls. If we're talking about within 10 points, OK, that's different. Um, after all, back in 2018... Uh, DeSantis did beat the polls in order to become governor. But the polls did not show that DeSantis in 2018 was 40 or 30 points behind uh, the leader. And so the results of last night should come as a shock to nobody. And I had heard that uh, DeSantis um, you know, was expecting this and that he was planning on dropping out after Iowa. But yet here we are, the, the day after, and DeSantis is still in the race. Vivek stepped out, and Vivek did, you know, what I would expect of a candidate. You know, a lot of candidates who are in, who get any sort of attention, just sort of for the sake of their supporters, they want to stay in the right, the race, at least until Iowa. Um, 
so that all of the you know campaign workers and things you know can kind of do their job and and do their thing and do what they signed up for and really you know work and give it the old college try even if you know you're going to lose and then once you lose in Iowa you go yeah I'm going to uh, bow out now you know I, I I made my run at it and you know we had a good run and we're moving on now because I'm not competitive it's obviously um, you know if it got like eight percent. He's not going to be the Republican nominee. I don't think Vivek uh, thought he was going to win. Even though, you know, when you're kind of technically, yeah, you, before Iowa, you say, well, of course I think I'm going to win. But I don't think Vivek ever thought that. Um, you know, maybe he thought he had a chance. That's different. At the beginning, you know, like a year ago. But within the last month or two, when he's polling in fourth place, uh, in the single digits or low teens yeah he's he's on pay, he's on the same page with reality he might hope to outperform the polls a bit but he's not going to expect uh, that, that he's going to be Trump and so the only conclusion I can come to at this point as to why Ron DeSantis is still in the race is that he is um, delusional on the level of someone let's say like uh, like John Kasich John Kasich in 2016 was not going to drop out of the Republican primary race under any circumstances. He just stayed in forever. And he said, well, just you wait until Ohio. We're going to win Ohio. And, well, yeah, Kasich did win Ohio. It was the only state he won. Um, and he did not become uh, the GOP nominee in 2016. There was never a world in which John Kasich was going to become the GOP nominee in 2016. He just stayed in the race for whatever reason. And then he faded into obscurity rapidly. Perhaps now he feels so isolated um, that he doesn't know what else to do. You know, it's not like things are going to get any easier for him for his future if he does drop out at this point. Um, I'm sure that as far as Trump is concerned... You know, DeSantis is dead to him. Perhaps even maybe DeSantis called, you know, Trump, you know, last night. I can see a scenario like this where I'm, obviously I'm, I'm making all this of this pure conjecture. I'm just saying I can see a world in which DeSantis, he said, oh, gee, I really lost. I, I you know, I'm going to call Trump and, you know, and say, hey, you know, um, we fought a good fight. Obviously, you won big. Uh, let's bury the hatchet. Um, and either... Trump told him to go to hell um, and rot in a pit. Uh, or he just didn't take the call at all. I could see that would be a very Trump thing to do. I think if, and not if I were Trump, but I'm saying if, if I'm trying to think like Trump, what I would do in that situation if DeSantis wanted to call and you know play nice after losing, um, after being humiliated, I would, uh, in Trump's mind, I think the instinct would be humiliate him further. Completely destroy him. Push him, push his face down into the mud. And so after that, after getting um, completely ignored by Trump like that, I think that DeSantis couldn't in good conscience as a man come out and, you know, drop out and endorse Trump. Because you're not going to endorse a candidate who um, hates you personally and, you know, has nothing but contempt for your very existence. But I would still drop out, you know, for my own sake and say, well, gee, I was, I was running to be president. Now it's clear it's, I'm not going to be president. So that's that. I'm bowing out. There's nothing left to do or say beyond that. You know, I mean, what's left for DeSantis at this point? Uh like a weekly variety show on Fox News? Um, maybe not even that. I mean, Mike Huckabee, who, as you folks might remember, had a weekly variety show on Fox News, I think won Iowa in 2008. He won the state. He did not come in a very, very far distant second. I mean, I think... Um, from what I saw, 
trumps a victory last night in a contested Iowa caucus. You know, when you don't already have a a sitting president. It was the biggest victory in what is ostensibly an open primary um, in the history of the Iowa caucus, which I believe go, only goes back to the 70s. So anyway, I, I think this is probably the last that we will hear in any serious sense from Ron DeSantis. Uh, he will have to reinvent himself somehow, go through it. You know, he's going to have to hit rock bottom uh, before he ever comes back from this. And, you know, considering how much goodwill he squandered and blew um, that he had built up between 2020 and 2022, uh, I just don't see him coming back from this. Because, you know, in the years before that, Ron DeSantis was, uh, a, you know, a mediocre political talent. And he showed some really great instincts from 20 to 22. Um he, I, I do think that it is fair to say he excelled uh, in that era, and he was ahead of uh, almost the the entirety of the rest of the Republican Party. But that was then, and and this is now, and you know that's political reality. Um, you know, news cycles last sometimes less than a day, and by the time that DeSantis wants to run for some other political office in the future. Um, People won't remember um, whether or not they liked how he governed from 20 to 22. For two years out of his eight-year term as the governor of Florida, um, most people outside of Florida won't even remember him as the governor of Florida. What they'll remember him as is that guy who um, – that little dweeby guy who, tried, who thought he could take on Trump and uh, got his hat handed to him and walked away – uh, with a big, uh, a big hand-sized pink imprint on his fanny, because he got spanked. There's no other way to look at it. So with that said, I will see you folks back here in the next one.